Our subject today is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, the heart of the matter, the heart of the matter. Meron akong uh, natatandaan na pinipreach lagi ni the late Pastor George Claridades, who is one of my mentors, na asawa ni Mami Melda Claridades. Lagi niya sinasabi, and I remember, the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. So, maga pong ito, ito po ating titignan dito po sa Ecclesiastes chapter 10, beginning in verse 2, sabi po dyan, A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom fall, faileth him, and he said to everyone that he is a fool. Sa talata po na ating binasa, dalawang talata po ito, Solomon is reminding us that both wisdom and folly start at the same place. Isa lang po ang pinagmumulan. Karunungan man o kamangmangan man. They both begin in the heart. Sa puso. This is very important because most people, when we think about the heart, we think strictly in terms of emotion. What we feel. Ano yung nararamdaman? But whenever the scripture mentions the heart, this is not simply about our emotions or affections, not even desires. It is much larger than that. Sa salita po ng Diyos, pinapakita sa atin, number one, the heart is the source of our life. It is the epicenter of our inner being. Kaya nga po sabi sa book of Proverbs, we must guard our hearts for out of it are the issues of life. Therefore, both wisdom and folly begin in the heart. Pero para mas maintindihan po natin kung anong sinasabi ni Solomon dito sa Ecclesiastes chapter 10, we also have to understand what he means when he directs wisdom to the right and folly to the left. First off, he is not offering a political commentary, nor is he ranting against left-handed people. <laughs> Instead, he is speaking about the place of honor that wisdom holds. When the scripture speaks about the right hand or the right arm, it is referencing what it means to know God. Alimbawa po, sa Psalms, David sings, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Sabi po yan sa Psalms 110 verse 1. The same is true for the heart of the wise. The inner being yung ating pong buong pagkatao ng isang tao may karunungan sa Diyos, alam niya na ang Diyos ay sapat at ang Diyos ang kanyang source and will therefore find itself in this place of honor. Whereas a heart of folly will not. Para sa isang tao mangmang po, hindi niya kayang maunawaan at Matarok ang kaisipan na may kinalaman sa kabutihan at katapatan ng Diyos. Pansinin po ninyo this is Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 3. Ang pagkakasabi po sa atin dito, there are two characteristics that will mark a life of wisdom. The first is found in how we use our time in this journey of life. As we walk along the road. Sa New Testament po, ang sabi po ni Apostle Paul, niliwanag po niya ito, kailangan po 
maging circumspect tayo. Sabi, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Yan po ang sinabi sa Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. Alam nyo, ni isa sa atin, hindi kayang stretch ang kanyang time. All of us have only 24 hours a day. None of us can stretch that and make it a little bit longer. We all have the same amount of time, whether we make it quality time or we make waste of our time. See, time is the great equalizer. How we use our time is a mark of wisdom. Yan po natin masusukat ang karunungan ng isang tao. When it comes to the heart of the matter, How we use our time. Are we making our time worthwhile? Or are we making our time wasted? This separates a wise man from a foolish man. A wise man uses his time wisely. Para sa isang wise, time is gold. Being wise means that you know the clock is ticking and the time is passing and you demonstrated wisdom by not allowing opportunities to pass and time to be wasted. In other words, wag po tayong maging mangmang sa paggamit ng ating oras. Think, use wisdom because time is short. We don't have much time. Si Lucifer, si Satan, he's doing the best he can. He's very diligent sa kanyang ginagawa. He's diligent. At talaga namang determined na gawin niya ang lahat ng kanyang magagawa para maloko niya ang lahat ng tao sa sanlibutan ito. Sabi sa Bible, because... He knew his time is running out. So dahil alam niya, paubos na ang kanyang oras, ilang panahon na lang, at siya ay hahatulan na ng Diyos, hindi na siya nagsasayang ng oras. So masasabi natin, in this respect, buti pa ang jablo, matalino sa paggamit ng kanyang oras. Marami sa atin, mga minamahal, we are foolish by wasting our time. Kaya pagdating sa Diyos, wala na tayong oras. Pagdating sa pagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos, wala tayong oras. Pagdating sa pananalangin, wala tayong oras. Pagdating sa pananambahan sa iglesia, wala tayong oras. Pagdating sa pagsusol winning, wala tayong oras. Pagdating sa mga bagay ng Diyos, lagi na lang tayong walang oras. Pero pagdating sa pansarili, ang dami nating oras. Yung mga lakad pamilya, yung mga lakad na wala namang ginagawa kung hindi puro mag... Uh, alam niyo yun? Yung mga pagay-unggay un lang. You see, the heart of the matter, the problem, is not because you don't have much time. The problem is, you are not having a right priority of how you will use the time God has given you. Hindi nyo na ginagamit ang oras na dapat ay ginagamit para sa Panginoon. Kaya po, kung ang isang tao ay paiiralin niya ang karunungan sa kanyang buhay, He will not be wasting time, but he will be using his time to which is more important for the things of God, for the things that counts in the eternal. So make the most of every opportunity. The second characteristic of wisdom is measured not just by our time, 
but by our relationship to others. How you use your time measures your wisdom, and how you relate to others measures your wisdom. Sabi po sa Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 3, some people lack sense and show everyone how reckless they are. Rudeness, unkindness. Si Paul po, ganito din ang sinabi sa kanya mga sulat. Sabi niya in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, in verse 17 to 20, mababasa po niyo ron na dapat tayo po ay nagpapasakop sa isa't isa out of reverence for Christ. We should submit ourselves to one another. You see, wisdom is measurable in our vertical relationship with God and in our horizontal relationship with others. It's a cross. Horizontally or vertically, our relationship with God. Yeah, vertical. Our relationship with God must be right. And horizontally, our relationship with others must be right. Sabi nga po, providing honest things not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. It is not enough that you say, I'm right with God, my, my life is right with God. But how about your life with others? Ako po, dito po kumanghang-mangha sa maraming mga kamanggagawa ko sa gawain eh. Mga pastor. We always assume pastors are right with God. And they should be. Because they are servants of God and men of God na naturingan. So we assume they are right with God. But if you will notice... Hindi naman lahat. But there are some who doesn't care about having a good relationship with their fellow pastors. Parang lagi na lang naghahanap ng away sa kapwa-pastor. Parang lagi na lang naninira ng kapwa-pastor. Parang lagi na lang na meron silang mga kapwa-pastor na gusto nilang saktan at sa itumba sa gawain. Eh. Natatawa ko minsan, pero nalulungkot ako. Why are we like these pastors? Hindi ba tayo pwedeng mamuhay ng maayos? Hindi ba tayo pwedeng maglingkod sa Diyos na yung ating differences hindi dapat nag sisira sa ating mga relasyon sa isa't isa? Pare-pareho naman tayong lingkod ng Diyos. Pare-pareho naman tayong struggling and striving to do our best to serve God, then why in the world we should shoot one another? And when one is fallen down, instead na iangat natin at ibangon, parang gusto pa natin tapakin at sipain. We should relate with one another in such a way that we will establish and fix broken relationships. Hindi lang po ito sa mga kapastoran. Sa lahat po tayo sa ating kapatiran. Sa church, di ba napakapangit sa church pagka ang mga tao ay nag-aaway-aaway at nagsisiraan, nagtatampuhan, nagtataniman na sama ng loob. Minsan na nga lang magkita sa isang linggo sa church pa, nagkita ang sasama pa ng tinginan. Nag-iismiran pa, hmm, mukha mo, hmm, pakilam ko sa'yo, hmm, pahala ka sa buhay mo. Ang pangit! Ang sabi ng Panginoong Yesus, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one for another. Pero mas pangit naman, kapatid, na pagdating sa church, ang bait-bait mo 
kay sister, ang bait-bait mo, kay brother. Pero sa inyong tahanan, sa inyong tunay na magkakapatid, sa inyong tunay na magkakamag-anak, ang sama ng ugali mo. Sabi ni Solomon, kung tayo po ay wise, we will make our relationship with our loved ones smooth, peaceful, and gentle. Solomon is reminding us that it is very important that we have a right relationship with our loved ones. Natutuwa po ako doon sa mga nandito nagpe-pray para sa kanilang loved ones, salvation of loved ones, salvation of relatives, salvation of brothers and sisters. Pero sana po mga minamahal, may we display the heart of the wise by getting our relationship with others right. Kaya po, huwag po tayo maging foolish. Let us get our relationship. Sabi nga po ni Apostle Paul, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Ito po ay hindi ayon sa ating kagustuhan, kundi ayon sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Nothing is more important in life than to have our relationship set right. May we display the heart of the wise by surrendering to God in this matter. Wag ho tayo maging proud. Wag ho tayong puro pride ang pinapairal. Ayaw ko makipagbatim. Ayaw ko makipagkasundo. Nasaktan ako eh. Ako yung naagrabyado eh. Ako yung uh, tinapakan eh. Ako yung... Huwag, huwag nating ipilit yung ating sarili, mga minamahal. Ang isipin natin, tayo po ay pamilya. At sa isang pamilya, importante po, yung tamang samahan. Yung pagkakasunduan. At hindi po yung nag -aawayan. Sabi nga po ni Apostle Paul sa Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Di ba napakaganda ng awiting household of faith? We are a household of faith and together we can make it and when the strong winds blow, we won't fall down. As one in Him will grow, and the whole world will know, we are the household of faith. Is your household the household of faith? Yung mantahanan mo ay tahanan ng pananampalataya. Baka namin tahanan mo ay tahanan ng Pag-aawayan at tahanan ng pagsisigawan, umagang-umaga, naririnig sa kapitbahay mo, nagbubulyawan kayo, kayong magkakapatid, kayong magkakamag-anak, kayo pa yung nag-aaway-aaway. At minsan nagmumurahan pa. Nakakahiya po yan. It's foolishness. When you pick up a fight with your flesh and blood. Laman at dugo mo eh, kapatid mo eh. O kapananampalataya mo sa Panginoon. Kaya po, ang lesson natin sa umagang ito, mga minama, let us get our heart right with God and let us get our heart right with our family, friends, brethren. 
tayo na po yung makipagkasindo. Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, if you have anything against your brother, go to him. Win thy brother. Huwag mong isipin na baka hindi naman kami magkakasundo. Baka wala na, wala na. There's no way we can get right with each other. Sa totoo lang po, mga minaman, minsan iniisip lang natin yun, pero sa totoo lang, if, if just one of us will make a first step, broken relationship can be fixed. Mas maganda na yung ikaw, yung peacemaker, because ang sabi ng Panginoon, blessed are the peacemaker. Mas pinagpapala po ng Diyos yung tao na ang gusto'y makipagkasundo kaysa makipagkalit. Kaya sana sa umagang ito, let us take care of the heart of the matter. Ang puso natin, iayos natin sa Diyos. Siguraduhin mong ang pananampalataya mo ay sa Panginoon. Siguraduhin mong wala kang pag-aalinlangan, wala kang pagdududa, tiwala ka sa katapatan ng Diyos. At siguraduhin mong ang puso mo, walang tinatanim na sama ng loob, walang galit, walang puot, laban sa sino man sa iyong mga mahal sa buhay. Life is so precious. Kailan natin marirealize siya? Pag wala na si kapatid? Pag wala na si sister? Pag wala na si brother? Saka tayo luluha? Saka tayo iiyak? Kung alam ko lang, sana nagkasundo na kami. Yun ang problema eh. Hindi natin alam hanggang kailan tayo dito sa mundo. So bago maging huli ang lahat, Ayusin na natin. Makipagkasundo na po tayo. If we make peace with God, why don't we make peace with our family and friends? This is Pastor Jess Marasigan. Salamat po sa patuloy nyo na pagsubaybay sa programang ito. At uh, patuloy po natin panalangin that people who are listening to us especially those we have invited, makaunawa ng salita ng Diyos. If you are here right now, hindi mo alam saan pupunta ang kaluluwa. You need Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You don't need religion. You need Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ has shed His blood on the cross to pay the price of our sins. If you are trusting religion to take you to heaven, you will not be able to make it. You will die and go to hell. Pastor, bakit? Mabuti naman yung religion ko. Opo, pero ang religion hindi siya ang namatay sa krus. And if religion is the answer, then Christ should have not died on the cross. He should just establish a religion. But no, when he came here, he did not establish a religion. He died on the cross for our sins. Because the only way our sins can be forgiven, that his blood would be shed, and by his blood, we are healed. By His blood, we had been forgiven. By His blood, we have been redeemed. Nananampalataya ka ba? Natangi si Kristo Jesus lamang ang kaligtasan. Paano ko magiging tagapagligtas si Kristo Jesus, Pastor? Talikuran mo ang iyong kasalanan? Kilalanin mong makasalanan ka? At 
lumapit ka sa Panginoon. Tanggapin mo siya bilang iyong Panginoon at tagapagdiktas. Surrender your life to God. Look to Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. Sabi po sa Acts 4.12, For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is the name of Jesus. So, sa umagang ito, kaibigan, sa palatayanan mo si Kristo. Bilang iyong tagapagdiktas. Salamat po, mga hopers. Thank you so much. May God give you a bright and better days ahead. As life goes on, hope goes on. Pray lang po tayo. Magtiwala tayo. Push until something happens. Have a great God day. God bless.